morning. This is Zelda LC number 44. Yes. This is Chairman Underwear. Yes. Hello, Hi, how Chairman Underwear. I'm great. How are you? Uh, yes, it's, Boston is a cold place. Hi, Chairman Zelda LC. Yes. Um, I am the Director of Governmental Affairs at Compassion for Animals. And I would like to thank you for taking time to meet with me today Absolutely. regarding a House Bill 110 Livestock Cruelty Prevention Act, which is currently sitting on committee for review. Now, I've, I've heard about how this has been moving, but I have no idea of the details, so please enlighten me. Yes, so I actually have a packet here for you. Um, I outlined some of the reasons why we asked that this bill does not make it out of your committee, and also we redlined uh, some of the provisions in the bill that are constitutionally suspect. But before we get into those. I'm not going to have time yes. to read that now. Perfect. OK. So this bill actually garnered support in the House of Representatives. It passed House of Representatives. Um, and it had more than 80 co-sponsors. And it also passed the Senate Ag Agricultural Committee. Yeah. And uh, I'm aware of the, the yes. movement. Tell me about the details of the bill. Please. Yeah, so the details of the bill, um, there are similar bills right now that are being constitutionally challenged in Utah and Idaho. This bill essentially is the quintessential ag-ag anti-whistleblower bill. It will allow factory farms to operate under a veil of secrecy. And it also criminalizes protected speech. So Compassion for Animals, as you are well aware, we uncovered footage in Westmark that um, brought to light a lot of the abuses that were happening there and also resulted in the recall of 138 million meat. Now, how exactly would you allow these, these, these places you're talking about to operate on this, this veil? What, what exactly does the bill do? Yes, yeah, so it actually criminalizes members such as um, individuals that uh, seek employment in these factory farms mm -hmm. under false pretenses. So if they do not so disclose... So you're saying it's good to lie? No, no, no. I'm saying if they do not disclose that they are there, for example, or if they may obtain material and they use it um, to bring to light some of the abuses that are happening in the facility, now, the, they will be well, criminalized. How, how would you feel then if someone say from the other side, lied on an application to come work at your organization and then took a bunch of information down and was part of secret meetings. Would you feel any way to violate it in that way? Um, if it were not for undercover investigative reporting, these abuses would not come to light. Federal and state agencies, for example, when they're doing their health checks, their annual audits in these facilities, they, they have not uncovered these abuses that are occurring. So you're not just trying to acquire private information? No. We're actually ensuring the proper treatment of farm animals. And also, we want to bring um, public health safety issues, workers' rights, mm. abuses, into light. For example, if this bill were in effect in the early 1900s, Upton Sinclair's The Jungle would not have come about. If it did, he would be criminally prosecuted. He was a communist, you know. <laughs> That's another area of discussion, <laughs> yes. Um, well, now, my big problem is that, as you well know, I live in a, I represent a rural community, and I've been told that you all You'll, you'll film this stuff and then you'll sit on it for months and months and months and you'll edit it out of context. And so what I'm hearing is uh, I know some of these people. They're good people. Mm -hmm. They're saying if there's any cruelty happening in their house, they want to know about it right away and put it into it. So what's the problem with requiring this information to come out right away? But why also add layers of protection so these factory farmers are essentially policing themselves. These footage that we uh, receive from Westmark, for example, we, we turn them over to federal authorities and we ask them to conduct their own investigation. So we are not um, acting as this rogue employ outside check on uh, these farms. We're actually trying to bring these abuses to light but, but there's still, like, is there a time lag there, or do you report it right away? How does that work? We do, re we do uh, contact police, for example, and other agencies, and, and then we report the abuses. And we also encourage them to press charges or to, to find them. So these type of actions do not continue to occur. Hmm, because, again, I'm being told by the folks in my community that this is 
there, this is usually the actions of a few bad apples, and they want to find out as soon as possible when this is happening. So would you have a problem then if, if we allowed this to occur, but we required the, 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 any cruelty you see to be reported within, say, 24 hours? But then who is reporting and who is policing the factory? It's the factory policing itself. No, you would be. So we, we allow you to come in there and film. Oh, sure. I'm trying to find some sort of compromise yes. here to cover my keister with my constituents. Uh, so we would allow you to come in there and film, but if you did see any cruelty, you would have to report it within 24 or 48 hours, something along those lines. Would that be something you'd be amenable to? Um, again, if um, an organization like CFA does enter into uh, the property of a factory farmer and they are given notice ahead of time, I'm not sure if that would be included in your bill because, and then such abuses, for example, would not come to light. Well, if they would, like say, like say, we, we, we let this bill, um, we, we just scale back the bill as it is so that it, 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 it allows your folks to come in and, and film if you think there's something really bad going on, mm -hmm. but it just requires that if you do see cruelty, you report it within 24 hours, because that way my constituents can root out these bad apples mm -hmm. and we can get the, the cruelty stopped. Yes, as long as it's not protecting, it's not uh, criminalizing protected speech. Okay. I, th I think that would, uh, that would not be constitutionally suspect. But the provisions of this bill explicitly do criminalize protected speech. And tell me exactly how they do that. Yes, so um, the provisions I'm under sorry, young section lady, one. <laughs> Bear with me one second. Sure. Hello. Oh, okay. <laughs> no problem. I do want to bring up something with you while, sure. while, while he's away. It's really important. You know, I talk to the farmers that call us all the time. So I think it's, you know, and, and, and our farmers in our community, these aren't factory farms. It's really important, I think, to have a sense that farmers in our state are family farms. Yes. And it's really good to keep that in mind, you know, because these, these people call us, and I, I talk to them all the time when I do constituent services, and it's, it's really important that these are moms and dads with kids and just trying to make a living in our community. You know? We definitely understand that. And um, also this bill Sorry is... Sorry to interrupt your commuting there. This bill is drafted very broadly, which essentially it says um, any facility that raises farm animals, for example, is protected under this bill. Now, so, are you a vegetarian by chance? Um, Semi-vegetarian, <laughs> yeah. Semi-vegetarian, because that's one thing I'm hearing from my people is that you say that you're out there to kind of root out this cruelty, but you're really trying to do is, is find really gory details of things that's not illegal, but just want to make it look bad and edit it so you can sort of veganize the world or something and put yeah. them all out of business. And if they're out of business, I'm out of business. Yes, well, the footage that we received, we handed over to the authorities in this form, unedited. And um, just to go back to uh, section one. Sure. This is um, right, right here. In, uh, so th these provisions are essentially identical or very similar to Idaho and Ohio statutes that are being constitutionally challenged in court right now mm -hmm. because these do implicate protected speech. And uh, Erwin Chemerinsky, which is a preeminent con law scholar, he also made statements saying that this bill will, it does uh, implicate. He also might be a communist, <laughs> my, my, my sources. Uh, now, you say these are being challenged, but have any of them won? How are those challenges looking? Um, well, Idaho actually it was dismissed, but on other grounds. It was not dismissed because uh, the woman for that was being prosecuted on the bill was found to be on public land. So it did not mm -hmm. implicate this bill. Utah, the trial is pending. Okay. Yes. And, and we're concerned that if this does make it out of your committee and it goes down to the Senate floor for a vote, that it will pass because uh, the Senate pro tempore, Jackie Snap, for example, she won't have the courage to veto this bill. You have and a lot I'm, of guts mentioning her name in this office. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, if it does pass, we are also concerned that the state of Bliss will spend a lot of money challenging, defending this bill while it's being challenged by organizations such as ours. That's a good point. So what, what, can I, what can I tell my people? What can I tell them why all these rural family farmers in my community, what can I tell them? If I were to kill this thing, what, what can I take back to them and tell them why this is good for them? Because they're, they're going to be mad at me. If this bill does pass and it becomes law, it's going to be constitutionally challenged. So this will not be protecting factory farmers as it's drafted. 
also it's going to the state will expend a lot of money defending this bill, millions of dollars, because it'll be in court. It'll be in court for years, and, and farmers I don't think, pay lots of taxes. Exactly, and I don't think the state of bliss wants to attract the national attention and the media that, for example, Idaho and Utah is attracting right now. <laughs> Let's kill this thing. Well, we're, we're happy to have your support. We're very happy. You can send order your order the flowers now to Representative Bowen's office uh, with a condolences card. Well, thank you, you so over. much for your time. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you. It was great to meet with you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> have a good day. You too. She doesn't do that very much. Okay. This is Alicia. That's wonderful Chairman, to meet you. Alicia, nice how are you today? Thank you for meeting me. Hi, I'm Hi nice to meet you. I'm Alicia Pagassi with Compassion for Animals. So, I'm here to talk to you today about House Bill 110 and to ask that you don't let the bill through your committee onto the floor for a vote. Um, House Bill 110. I'm Go sorry? ahead, please. Okay. Um, House Bill 110 is marketed as an animal protection bill, but really it's far from that. Um, it prohibits crucial investigations at farming operations, and it allows abuse to go undocumented. Um, in addition to that, it's really a public safety risk, and um, it could be constitutionally suspect. We, we've seen that in other states. So um, we would really like it if this bill did not go through. So tell me a little bit about how specific. I'm under. I'm aware of its movement through the House and the, the Ag Committee, but tell, tell me some of the specifics of how it would do all these terrible things you're talking about. Sure. Well, so I'll start with um, you know I think the most the most obvious, which would be animal protection. Um, on its face, it's it's the Livestock Cruelty Prevention Act, but it, it doesn't stop animal abuse. Actually, what it does, it stops animal abuse from being exposed to the public. Um, this, um, the, the rapid reporting requirement prevents um, documenting patterns of abuse. And that's really problematic for, for really two reasons, I think. Um, and one of those is that it, it's tough to differentiate between a, a, an isolated instance of abuse versus you know, a, a farming operation where abuse is occurring every day. Yeah, but what, as you well know, I uh, represent a rural community. and. What I'm hearing from my people is that, I know, and they're the good people. They're saying that they, they would like to know about this cruelty as soon as possible so they can make sure it ends, because mm -hmm. usually it's not them. It's some guy off the street who they don't know about, some bad apple who's, who's right. doing all this stuff, and they want to find out about it and get that person fired as soon as possible. Sure. And I, I understand that. You know, um, and, and like you said, they're your constituents, and, and I think that there are a lot of good people out there. But I do think that we've seen this enough in, in other states where you know that the owners of the farming operation might might not even know that it's going on but the abuse does occur again which is why it's a good idea day. to have it reported as soon as possible so they can find out well you know it's it's really I, I, I understand that position I really do especially I, I understand it because a lot of farmers do care about the livestock that they produce but this is really it's even more than an animal protection issue I mean, this, this goes into a public safety and public health issue as well. So tell me, where, where are your offices? Um, our, our offices are in the state of Bliss. Okay. Now, how would you feel if one of the farm folks in my community went to and put in a job application and got a job with you all, or one of their young tattooed kids went in there, and they worked there for six months and they took all sorts of secret video of some of your secret meetings and then they exposed that to the media do you how is how is that how would you feel about that you know i i understand that they don't like that i i understand that um they like to hold themselves accountable but but when this abuse is going on um it needs to be documented it, it just um it, it's necessary because you know you'll see in other instances um, where these investigations occur and then the, the abuse is exposed to the public. Um, you'll see that, no oh, don't worry about it. Um, you, you'll see that it's, it's necessary for public safety reasons um, because a lot, of, a, a lot of what's going on um, you know, like for example, there was there was a in 2007 a Humane Society investigation 
into a farm that was producing and selling contaminated beef. Um, and the USDA didn't catch that with their inspections. So that, that system essentially failed. And so, you know, because of the Humane Society investigation, um, there, was, there was the largest beef recall in US history. Mm. And so for reasons like that, you know, it, our, our food security depends on understanding what's going on at these farms. And so I understand that farmers don't want people interfering with their farming operations. But what, isn't it true, though, that you all, when you sit on these videos for lengths of time and you can edit them out of context, like, that, that's what I keep coming back to, because this is a, a Livestock Cruelty Prevention Act, so all my constituents think that it is preventing cruelty to livestock, and it, it seems kind of antithetical to the idea of preventing cruelty if you wait six months before these, this cruelty even gets reported. And I understand that. On an individual basis, it is unfortunate that you have to wait while these animals suffer abuse every day. But on a broader scale, it's necessary because, you know, like the, um, the farm that I referenced, um, that farm is, is no longer in business. Um, and that's not what we want. We don't want to put farms out of business, but... Same thing with my constituents. Yes. We're not, we're not looking to put farms out of business, but my point is that the abuse there was so bad and there was so much of it that, and, and there, was, there was no regulation. Um, and so, on a broader scale, the abuse stopped. Hmm. Um, I can't, I, my apologies. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you have any other questions about the bill? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm concerned because you, know, you keep saying that there's yeah. no regulation, but you know, no. you have the, you know, I, I talk to the farmers all the time, they call me. Oh, sure. They're inspected by the USDA, and then we have, you know, they also have you their state regulations, state so yeah, you do we have enough? place already and isn't this a good idea you know just to let the systems that we have in place work I understand what you're saying and and yes we should let those systems work but when something occurs like like it did um, out in California with that that really big beef recall it's clear that sometimes the regulations aren't working and so this kind of acts as a safeguard essentially again my apologies oh that's all right are you two done commuting <laughs> So what can, what can I take, you've got to understand, mm -hmm. one of my main goals as a legislator is to continue being a legislator. Exactly. And I can only do that if I get reelected in my home district, mm -hmm. which is chock full of farmers. Sure. Again, many of whom are wonderful people. Mm -hmm. um, so if I do something that deliberately goes against their livelihood, that goes against my livelihood. Mm -hmm. So what can I take back to them to explain how, how this could possibly benefit them? Because they, they see this as a, a, uh, something that, that A, protects their, their jobs, and B, roots out cruelty to livestock. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it is important to emphasize that these investigations aren't trying to attack the farms. Um, and if the farmers are in- but they are highly embarrassing. Well, I, I understand that, but if the farmers are indeed caring for their animals in the way that so many of them say they are, and they are regulating their employees, then this really shouldn't be a problem, because then there's, there's nothing to film, really. Um, I think that it, it's hard to create one of these, these videos or audio recordings if there's no abuse occurring. I agree with that, but I still need to explain to them how this is in their best interest. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I think that... I think that ensuring regulations on farms is, is going to ultimately be in their best interest. Um, I, I know that it's a little uncomfortable. You know, they, they might see this, um, they, they might think that groups like us are coming in to attack their farms, but that's just, that's not the case. Now, again, uh, are you vegetarian by chance? Um, yes. You are? Mm -hmm. And see, that, again, gets to the, the other problem I hear from my constituents is that you say this is about animal cruelty. You say you're trying to stop these terrible things that may or may not be happening. But in reality, what you're trying to do is get in there and just put an end to all meat eating whatsoever. That you're going to, you know, veganize the world or something. How do you respond to those challenges, those arguments? Sure. I mean, well, I would say that you don't see these these um, investigations 
occurring at, at farms where animals are, are treated really well. Um, I think that, you know, especially smaller scale farms, we really don't do investigations into smaller scale farms um, where it's, it's much easier for the farm owner to regulate all of the employees. Um, and so we're, we're not trying to turn everyone into vegetarians or end meat eating. It's really just about the treatment of the animals. So give me, give me one sentence I can take back. Give me one, encapsulate this all, your position in one sentence if you could. Sure. Um, I think that um, you know, did, did not letting this bill go through is, it's really in the best interest of the animals, it's in the best interest of the farmers who want to see productive farms but want to still maintain the welfare of their animals. You've won me over. Wonderful. You can order flowers to Representative Bowen's office with a condolences card and this thing will never see the light of day again. I appreciate that so much and I appreciate your time. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman Underwear, this is Sarah. Hello there, Sarah. How are you today? Yeah, I'm great. How are you? I am Sarah, God chief of staff. awful. <laughs> Thank you. I am. I'll just start by saying I'm very hungover today, so please be gentle with me. <laughs> no problem. You know, Frank Sinatra had a great quote. He said he feels sorry for people who don't drink, because when they get up in the morning, that's as good as they're going to feel all day. So. I'm resembling that remark today, so what can I do for you today? Uh, well, I am, with, I am the Director of Governmental Affairs with Compassion for Animals, and I'm here to discuss House Bill 110 with you. Okay. Um, I'm here to actually ask you um, not to hold a hearing on it and instead to let it quietly die, um, because it would be a, a very bad bill for our state and the state uh, agriculture producers as well. Mm -hmm. Now. I'm aware of some of the, the movement of this bill, but I don't know anything about the details. So I, I, rather than read this, I'd like you to please just tell me what the details of the bill are and sure. why it's problematic in your eyes. Um, this bill is a type of ag ag bill. You might have heard that term uh, from other states. Um, there's been a couple. I thought it's preventing cruelty to livestock. What's this gag stuff you're talking about? Um, it's called ag ag because it is um, actually preventing videotapes and surveillance that undercover investigators do at uh, these farming facilities. Um, they release these videos to the public and um, these bills are kind of the reaction to these investigations and it's trying to prevent them from um, allowing these videos to be uh, published and let, released to the public. Um, it's this bill, House Bill uh, 110, is, has two main provisions. Mm -hmm. The first is for trespassers um, who unauthorized, um, have, do not have authorized access to the facilities. Isn't trespass already illegal, though? Yes, exactly. That's why it's not, the first provision is not necessary. Um, it just has a higher penalty for um, if when they trespass, they take these videos or surveillance. Um, and then the second provision is about uh, employees. And if they take these videos, they have to turn it over to the public within 24 hours. Now, where are your offices? Um, Compassion for Animals? Yes. We are uh, a non-governmental agency, and we... Um, but you have a physical office, correct? Yes. So how would you feel if one of my pierced, tattooed children of one of my farming constituents got a job with you all, and stayed there for a year and took all sorts of videos of secret meetings and then plastered that all over the media. Would you have a problem with that? Um, I might have a privacy issue, but this... So how is that any different from this? Um, it's actually... You're doing the exact same thing. You're sending your people into their business and filming stuff and then throwing it all over the media. Yes, and I understand how that... Um feels for these farmers, but we'd actually like to, my organization would love to work with these farmers and explain how um, it would be beneficial to them to promote transparency rather than to, you know, these bills seem like they're hiding from something and it pr promotes this distrust with the public. And Well, I mean, do, do, you, do you eat animals? Do you eat meat? I do not. You do not. So when you say you want to work with these people, but, and would you like to see other people not eat meat? Um, that is not my mission. Um, I would like to work with them actually just to produce uh, more transparency with the public. Um, there's many ways we can um, help that, uh, them have a better relationship. Because some of my more enlightened constituents say that they've gone to your all's website and they see there's a bunch of stuff in there about Meatless Mondays and all sorts of things to reduce the thing that they make their living from. So. You say you're out here to, to kind of stop cruelty, but what I'm hearing from them is that you just want to 
make sure no one eats meat and bring an end to their whole existence. Is that true? No, um, we are not trying to prevent um, people from eating meat. This is this bill particularly focuses just on um, the. Um, release of videos and we think that this actually is a you know this bill prevents this um, release which we think is a good thing for the public to know what's happening um, so we're just here today to talk about this bill I, I understand so but I have a problem with it. I'm trying to find some sort of compromise here mm -hmm. is that uh, oh, excuse me one second yeah. sorry <laughs> not an issue oh. You know, I talk to these folks. I'm, these farmers call me all the time, yeah. you know, when I'm taking some constituent calls from time to time. And, you know, I know some of these folks, and they're, they're our neighbors, you know. These are, these are families, moms, dads with kids just trying to make a living, you know. And, you know, they've called me, and they're concerned. They have, you know, state regulations. They have federal regulations. And now they've got these people trespassing in their property to come and look at what they're doing. I just, you know, it's, it's hard for me to, to swallow this pill. Yeah, we actually hope that the state agriculture producers will grow to see the benefit of promoting transparency with the public. Um, like I said, we would love, my organization would like to work with the state agriculture producers to try to come up with a better solution than a bill that uh, makes it look like they're hiding things, which promotes the distrust. Hmm. My apologies again. Always. <laughs> you guys done communing over here? Yeah. Um, so back to what I was just asking, that you know, I'm trying to find some sort of compromise because I need to cover my keister with my constituents because if they don't have a livelihood, neither do I. So this, they, they're telling me that, I mean, if there's cruelty occurring, why wouldn't we want to find out about it as soon as possible? Um, well, this 24-hour reporting period. Exactly. Um, it actually, a lot of times, there's not within 24 hours, there's not enough time to do a full investigation. They just see one day, and they have to immediately turn everything over. Mm -hmm. um, organizations like um, like ours and like others, animal activists like Mercy for Animals, it takes weeks to put these investigations together. And the only way that we can show what's happening in these facilities um, is to do the complete investigation. It's like the New York Terror thing. If you see something, say something, right? Um, yes, but again, this makes it actually illegal for if you see something and record it to keep, hold on to it for even two days. You know, sometimes they can't get over immediately to the uh, law enforcement. But, but, but I know some of these people, and they're, they're good people, and they love their animals, and they're telling me that, you know, usually it's some lame brain guy off the street doing this, and they, have, they don't even know that it's occurring, and they want to find out as fast as possible so they can fire that clown and make sure that this doesn't happen. But their operations are so large, they can't be in charge, know, know all this detail. So, you know, it seems to me a, a fair compromise that we let you all in there to record this stuff. You just have to make sure that any cruelty is reported right away so they can root out these bad apples. I mean, you just can't get good help these days, right, Laura? Yes, well, one of the problems with this bill is it's anti-whistleblower, which um, is, is a, a problem as well because, it, like I said, it promotes this distrust with the public. They see it as they're hiding something that these whistleblowers can't come forward. Yeah. And instead, a better solution would, like I said, we'd like to work with these um, state producers and come up with something maybe like putting cameras in the facility so that they can see. Um, Do you like cameras in your bedroom? Well, this is not exactly a bedroom. It's their uh, work facility, and um, also promoting. The breeding does occur. Yes, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, also, advocating for uh, mandatory training and promoting um, better uh, euthanasia standards and policies. You know, th these standards will prevent these uh, organizations from needing to do that activism, and it'll promote trust with the public. I still have a hard time getting my head around why you wouldn't want this cruelty reported as soon as possible. Why? Because what I'm being told by these folks um, is that sometimes it's not an extra day, but sometimes it's six to eight months after you film these poor animals being harmed, you allow them to continue to be harmed, uh, and you go away and you edit and you wait till a donor time's right to get a bunch of money from your juicy donors and you throw the video out then. Meanwhile, this same poor animal that you have on camera has continued probably been abused and cru had cruelty by some lame brain for the previous eight months and you just let that happen. 
Well, if we aren't able to do our complete investigations, then we can actually turn over the, all the information and animal abuse will continue to occur because they'll, after 24 hours they put the information forward, then they have to leave the facility um, because by then their cover is blown and they, they cannot advocate for the best um, treatment of the animals. There's also a lot of constitutional claims. Um, un unconstitutional claims about this bill. There's two big problems, both the First Amendment of protected speech and equal protection, because they expressly um, are targeting these animal activists and against their uh, their organization. So are these being challenged anywhere? Yes, um, they are. That Right now there are about eight, seven or eight states that have these bills, some from the 1990s, and most of them are most recent. Um, and there's two states that have are ha spending a lot of money right now um, in court over these issues, constitutional claims, Idaho and Utah um, especially. And so what can I take back to my constituents? How can I possibly tell them, what can I cover my keister with to say, look, this is something that's trying to end your livelihood in their eyes. What can I tell them to protect my butt when I vote for, to, to, or when I try to kill this thing? Well, 88% of the registered voters in your state are against this bill. They oppose it. Um, and the rest, you know, you can go back to the state agriculture um, producers and explain to them that this distrust of their company is actually bad for their business. It's going to decrease their profits. So instead, promote transparency, work with our organizations to come up with better alternatives, um, and hopefully it'll be beneficial for everyone. Okay, give me one sentence. Put, put your position in one sentence for me so I can encapsulate it and take it back. Um, to Which you're, I'll allow you. Okay. Um, to explain to the state producers that um, promote that transparency will actually help their uh, profits and help their um, their the public's view of them. Young lady, you have won me over. <laughs> you can uh, order some flowers to Representative Bowen's office with a condolences card. This thing will never see the light of day again. Great. Thank you so much. Take care. Nice to meet you. Chairman Underwear, this is Laura. Hi, Mr. Chairman. Great to see you. Hi, Laura. Hi, Chief of Staff. Nice, nice to meet you. What's your name? Laura. Laura. Um, I'm learning for you, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to meet with you today about House Bill 110. Um, it's something that we're going to need your help to not let it get to the Senate floor and die in your committee. And why wouldn't you like that to happen? Um, this bill has some serious issues with drafting and constitution constitutionality. Um, it has serious concern. We have serious concerns about the First Amendment in this on this bill. Um, it's going to squash the free speech rights of our investigators that we use. I know you might be familiar with the Westmark case. I am. Um, we sent someone in there to, um, and they uncovered some serious food safety violations and animal welfare issues. And in fact, it led to the largest beef recall in our state's history. So um, that would squash investigations like that and have implications beyond investigators like ours on farms, but also journalists who use those tactics. My apologies. D no worries. Um, it would have, it doesn't do anything to promote animal welfare in our state. It's, it was. It's called the Livestock Cruelty Prevention Act. It seems to be that it's intended to prevent cruelty to livestock. Right. How is that not helping animals? This bill is actually just another ag gag bill. We've seen other states try to. Um, What's this gag mean? Yeah, it's like. It, it, these are bills cruelty? that try to limit um, undercover investigations on farms. So they do them in, in several different ways. We've seen um, states take different approaches. Several states have tried to pass them and then they're either vetoed by the governor or they don't make it through because um, specifically in Tennessee, I know, uh, passed the House and Senate and then the, the governor vetoed it because the attorney general had unconstitutional questions about um, if, it would, if it would pass First Amendment scrutiny. So hmm. um, other bills have tried, or other states have tried to pass bills like this. Okay, well tell me about the details of this bill. How exactly okay. does this gag, it says to me, all my folks are saying this prevents cruelty and you're talking this gag stuff. So how exactly so does So this it do one this? was drafted in a way that um, is different from other states. It didn't make it a, a, a crim uh, It didn't make it against the law to take the video. It made it against the law to take the video and then fail to turn it in. So you had to report any um, evidence of animal cruelty. Other states have Which, tried what's this. What's the problem with that? Other states have tried this approach. Well, it limits our investigators' ability to show patterns of abuse. If you see something, say something, right? Well, and, and then it limits, it, it also chills the, effect, the um, effect. It has a chilling effect. So um, it limits our investigators' ability to get there in the first place if they have to turn it in. It, this is the part I have a biggest problem with, is that if, you know, 
I, I, I know a lot of these people, and they're good people, and they're telling me that they, they don't want to see cruelty to livestock. Our that farmers. if they know, yeah, and if, if you see it some off the street, low wage guy who's doing this, and they have, their operations are so big, you can't keep track of everybody. And so if they find out about it, they want to fire these clowns as fast as possible and put an end to this cruelty. What, what's wrong with that? Well, I know that the Westmark, in the Westmark case, they specifically did that. Um, if our investigators can't get in to reveal these things, we don't know if they're going on in the first place. So our investigators help law enforcement uncover animal cruelty issues. Um, so if we can't get them in to do that, then it won't. So, so, so you're saying this bill, it, 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 does, it does or does not allow them it to come in and film? It's going to have a, a chilling effect on our investigators' ability to go in there. So it allows employers to set a policy about cell phone use on their farms. Um, that's going to limit our if, our, if our investigators can't use their cell phones to take pictures of animal abuse, then it's not going to happen in the first place. Well, I'd like to have a policy ban on cell phone use in this, this, this house and this office specifically. But um, so it, it does allow them to film or does not allow them to film? It does not film? criminalize the taking of the video. It criminalizes okay. the failure to, to turn well, it see, in. See, that seems Other to me it goes against so what you're just saying, though, that like it does allow the government to film. You just have to report the cruelty earlier, right? Well, it, it doesn't criminalize the taking of the video. Okay. It criminalizes so the failure to take it So that doesn't prevent you from going in, right? Well, it has a chilling effect. If our, if our, if Farmers set policies that don't allow um, cell phones, then it has a chilling effect on free speech. And I'm well, because I've been told, I, I understand if it's you know a little bit of time, but I've been told that some of these things, you go in there and it's it's not just a, a week or two to get your issues your your film together. That it's often eight months before you come out, and that the reason you're holding on to those is to cause some sort of embarrassment or when it's a juicy time for your donors um, and that you've got this cow that you may see being cruelly abused by some lame brain and you are allowing that cow to continue to be abused for those eight months and this poor owner has no idea that it's even happening. This bill has, it's called a quick reporting bill. Yeah. So you see, what if you had, a, what if you, had, you knew there was a child being abused? Would you want to allow her to continue being abused just so you could get more juicy footage? I think that this is different than the child abuse thing we see pr where you have to report child abuse. Um, we don't want this effect on our First Amendment rights. It, it goes beyond the farm. So the effect of chilling First Amendment rights in this state for journalists, for our investigators, for other groups that want to do, the, to, to do undercover investigations is um, not going to pass muster in the courts. We see other states that are going through um, issues like this. Idaho and Utah are having theirs challenged uh, under the First Amendment, and that's not something we want our state to go through. Speaking of banning cell phone use, yeah. uh, my apologies, one second. Well, let's you and I continue this conversation. This also has implications for animal welfare. It did not, uh, it doesn't have any protections for animals. I know that it was pitched as an animal welfare bill, but it has very um, weak provisions in there. It creates a board to create standards that really have no legal effect. How do the standards, I mean, not have any legal effect? If we have a board, don't we have a board that's going to be looking at this stuff? And, you know, if we have a board, doesn't that make it better? Then there's, you know, people to have an even better better eye and we don't need private organizations so coming into our farms. The, it was pitched as a board that has um, has agriculture representation as well as animal oh. rights groups representation. Um, the, the board doesn't, they can create standards but they don't have to be adopted by the Department of Agriculture or the legislature as having legal effect. Um, so it might just be an advisory board that doesn't really have any legal protections for animals at all. For, furthermore, the bill has an exemption for farmers if they're um, doing something that's accepted by, the, uh, is an accepted agricultural practice, they can't have, uh, they can't be convicted under animal cruelty statutes. So it really weakens provisions for animals. And, and well, don't we have, I mean, don't, don't, don't let have, me interrupt. Sorry, Senator, please, go ahead. Uh, I, I, do you eat meat? I do eat meat. You do eat meat. What, does your organization have a position on eating a meat? Because what my constituents are telling me that your organization is out to just, it's not about cruelty, you're out to just embarrass them to the point where no one ever wants to eat meat again, and you know that's their whole livelihood, and if they don't have a livelihood, neither do I. Our group is focused on uh, improving the welfare of animals who are raised for food, uh, whether individuals choose to consume them or not. Um, that's what our position is, improving the, animals, uh, the welfare of animals in our state. Now, how would you feel if 
one of our one of my constituent farmers and I've seen these they've got these kids with all the tattoos and ear stuff what if they came got a job with you all in your offices and stayed there for six months taking all sorts of videos of private meetings and then edited it together to make you all look really ridiculous would you have a problem with that well this is different because it's protecting animal welfare and it has food safety implications as well so this goes to consumers of food um, throughout the state it has larger implications um, because everyone well not everyone but um, most folks consume um, food animal products so the implications of this are larger and in that situation if we were to limit that um, investigation even on our premises it would still have first amendment issues um, it would not pass constitutional constitutional muster um, so that would be something that would also have issues okay. later in the court so say that i was inclined to decide your way um, you know, one of my primary jobs as a legislator is to continue being a legislator. Uh, so I need the votes of these people in my home district or none of us are in this room. So a recent poll shows that 88% of voters in the state are opposed to this bill. So um, we have broad, so broad opposition to the bill from voters yeah, as but 80, well as- Yeah, 88% of those are the hippies up in the big city. Uh, I live down in a rural community and I need to specifically appease them. So what can I tell them? So what can I say to them? Hey, give them some cover for my keister to go out and, and, and make happen what you want to happen, I need to cover with them. If this bill were to pass and become law, it could be tied up in courts like we see Idaho and Utah, and it would seriously um, put farmers through, it, it would have a lot of bad publicity for farmers who supported this bill. Mm -hmm. So um, if farmers support this bill and then it doesn't pass constitutional muster, it's going to be a real problem for them, and the pol political capital will be reduced in the future. So give me one sentence. If, I, if you had to just encapsulate everything you're telling me now into one sentence, what would that be? This bill, first of all, the, first, the bill will not pass constitutional muster in, in our courts. Um, that's a huge issue when you don't want to see free speech um, infringed upon. It will not protect animals. In fact, it does the opposite. It weakens animal protections and it has food safety implications for the general public. So this is a bill that does not need to get to the Senate floor and we need your help to prevent it from getting there. Well, young lady, you have won me over. So you can uh, order flowers to Representative Bowen's office with a condolences card and uh, whatever else you'd like to uh, send along. And uh, this thing will never see the light of day, at least not for this session. Thank you for your support. Take care. Good to meet you, Laura. Great meeting.